to order at 9.31. Um, we'll start with the roll call and determination of forms. Matthew Hain. Here. Paul Lewis. Present. Jamie Jackson. Sama Mead. Here. Kathy Coffey. Here. Adam Derrick. Here. Melody Fowler. Here. Amy Garberini. Here. Attending virtually. Thank you. Kate Gibson. Here. Christine Heather. Leon Hughes. Cassie Lord. Daniel Koning. Nick Miner. Stephen Miner. Nick Ruiz. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Bob Schneider. Rodney White. Here. Pella Bari. Lee Anderson. Mohamed Benamar. Here. Chelsea Betas, Kimberly Cook, Mike Craig, Here. Brian Council, Shannon Fennell, Susan Gardner, Todd Horsley, Jacob Haskell, Craig Pennington, Greg Reed, Joe Stanton. We have a call. Awesome. Thank you. The chair just to mention the stock. Um, one of our staff, Becky Golden, is not well, um, so she is attending remotely, but she does have to talk to one of the items, so she'll be online with that item. Okay, thank you. Item 8B. All right, uh, we'll move on to the approval of the January 8th, 2024 Technical Advisory Committee agenda. Do you have a motion? Yeah, well, I, I actually uh, wanted this to be the EMAT SCBG item to come to the beginning of the review. Okay, and okay. Uh, we moved up to zero eight a. What is the reason for the move? Uh, we we have some staff that's going online at this beach. Uh, I I would like them to yep. list yes, on that. Okay. They, they have some other stuff to do later. Okay. Um. Do I have a motion with the amendment of moving moving item eight C to the beginning of item eight? Motion. Do you have a second. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, we'll move on to item number four, review of the November 20th, 2023 policy committee meeting. Lock in another century, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because the law is not going to have to actually read off there. Um, it's not a balance means yes. Okay. Um, the seat amendments, you know about those. It can't be the tax. You, you know the amendment, you also know about the tax. Tip rollovers and the tip adjustments, those are also been through the tax. So you, you'd love to see those in November yourselves. Scroll down, please. Uh, Smart Girl um, carried it, uh, the same updates that was presented by the attack. Our three proposal, this one, we updated the version that we brought to the attack with more information, but we put it on the agenda today so, it's, uh, so that we get to see it as well. Um, the uh, policy committee did give a resolution of support. And we have subsequently sent it to all the other jurisdictions along the route we part of so that they then wish to weigh in on this issue. And I believe some of them are through resolutions and some of them are debating sending a resolution as well. So that could be instructed. Um, and that goes right out to the end of the line, right? Not just in our region. The Regional Transportation Authority, um, we had three of the um, representatives from the General Assembly that have been re-elected or elected um, attend that meeting and we had some interaction between the policy committee of them and I think what was clear from that meeting is that they they had intended to present again legislation to create an RTA and I think after some Maybe I'd say robust exchange between policy committee members and themselves. 
they sort of belatedly agreed to hold off for a while to give Camp and DWRC the opportunity to discuss this before they submit their draft legislation again. I haven't honestly in January been to check the records in the um, General Assembly to see that they did stick to their agreement, but I'm hoping they did. And the upshot after a long discussion was that the policy committee, together with the two rural counties, agreed to form a subcommittee that would start in January and complete its work by June to discuss the detail and see whether there is an agreement on a proposal or not, and that they would present um, a proposal of some kind to the policy committee by June. That proposal, of course, could be don't do it or whatever. But anyway, so there's a subcommittee starting on, I believe, the 29th of January in the very room, and they will meet once a month until June to decide what they wish to do about the issue. So that's where we are with it. I didn't even get to finish my presentation. It basically just it turned into a very robust conversation and discussion. And so I, I just left off finishing my presentation to, to allow them to discuss. Um, future of transit in Pampo region. Um, we were asked last year in the policy committee to work with um, Fred. Epic Vigo and, and Omni Riot about greater cooperation in the region on transit and look at some future possibilities. And so we did meet, we went back to the policy committee and we asked for further guidance because we weren't sure how far they want us to investigate proposals in the region for transit. Um, it's excluding rail transit, but it includes all forms of buses and so the policy committee then answered our questions and said, yes, we want you to go and investigate the options for uh, basically local and regional transit, I would say. And so the next step is for myself and Jamie and Bob Schneider and so on to have a follow-up meeting and talk about what um, proposals we will investigate and how to present those to the policy. Um, and then we just did the meeting schedule for the year with the dates and the calendar. Uh, PMP update, it's, that one was done. Uh, Becky is now working on the next one, just to turn your attention to it. Federal regulations require us to actually tell the policy committee that the next quarter of the congestion management processes uh, updates have been done and on the website to draw their attention to it. And I'm sure you all know the point of that is that we're supposed to look at where the congestion is getting worse on our major corridors when we are working with transportation projects. That's the whole the theoretical premise behind having a CMP and PMP. And it's especially required because of the TMA in North Stafford, but not only, not only in the TMA, it extends across the region. Uh, we had a public involvement for just a, it was a very short summary that Cody presented just to uh, how much public engagement we've had in the last year. Um, Cody, do you remember the numbers? I can't put them in yet. Over 250 people. Yeah, 250 people have been spoken to one on one in person uh, through our public engagement efforts. And we've had hundreds and hundreds of responses to surveys and public comment opportunities last year. Um, that's basically it. The rest of it probably on the agenda today. Or you've seen it yourself in the attack in November anyway. So I can ask a few questions about the uh, the proceedings from that policy agenda yes. the policy committee. So you mentioned that they didn't want to include rail transit in the exploration of future transit in the region. Was there a reason or was it just the, in their conception of what transit means? It's they, FX to go and Omni ride. So we were specifically directed to look at um, local transit options, regional okay. transit options, not not how to get more people to DC or Northern Virginia. So it's it's Focus on 
regional transportation. Okay. And I guess there isn't the ridership to have a local rail option in the area. I'll just say that um, one of the markets we've identified on the Fredericksburg line for, for future service, and it's something we're actually planning service increases around, is the is the local Fredericksburg. It's getting people from Stafford to Spotsylvania and back. And the potential Caroline to Stafford. Yeah, essentially. Um, so I would say don't rule out the potential. And we, we made similar comments to FXB Go on their TSP draft that that VRE could be be used in the future. Not now, obviously, because of the limited frequency, but in a world where we run all day and 20 minutes, you know, 20 minute headways, what have you, you know, that forms a pretty enticing regional spine. And so I would just consider, you know, including that in the plans for, because it is, at this point, the only off-road north-south, you know, option that doesn't you know, get you stuck in the same mess that the buses would get stuck in well, on 95 or Route 1. I'll chat with Jamie and with Bob, but perhaps what you could do is present us three or four slides to talk about that that yeah. we could include in, in our report. What's the timeline for that? Um, so we said to them that it would take us the first quarter to present because they want numbers, okay. right? And so in order to prepare materials, we would, we would be standing every March to prepare materials to present okay. to them. Okay. So February or March, you're saying, or March or April, like to give a, because we're kind of in the tail end of the last phase of the, of the long range plan. And so I would say by safely by March, but even more safely by April, we'd be able to present, this is exactly what we're looking to pursue and what our board is looking to adopt, that kind of thing. So that yeah. matched with the timeline. We, we have to have an exact timeline, but I, I, when they asked me to do it in a month, I stretched it out to three months said to them we need longer than a month to come okay. up with numbers. Right. So I'm, I'm guessing in March we would need to say something. Okay. All right, I'll I'll make a note of that because, I mean, we have materials. We're actually, this Thursday, we're going to be finalizing the 2050 vision internally and then performing analysis on that. So, we're, I mean, we're very close to having something and that, that you could actually use as a super future kind of planning for vehicles. <laughs> whether Caroline County is interested, but I know that your numbers show that there is a travel market from Caroline to Stafford uh, of a lot of people. And, yeah. And, and the train line is this. So I don't know whether they're interested, but... Yeah, I mean, I would go back to the... You remember the presentation we did at the uh, Caroline County Board that yes. a couple months ago that the numbers are in there, but we're going to refine those a little bit because those are very high level, like total daily travel, you know, just in, in totality, so... Okay. Well, oh, I would yeah. say go ahead and put together a few pages and we can include Okay. Those. I think that's... All right. Well, we'll, we'll target March then. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll move on to public comments. Comments and questions from members of the public are welcome at this time. Staff will also read comments submitted by the public prior to the meeting. Is there anyone online or anybody in the room who wishes to make public comments? Three minutes. Sure. Well, very briefly, a lot quicker. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm Alan Watkins. I know I'm back with the course. I live at 12 England Run Lane in Stafford County, the George Washington District. And I'm also a member of the CTAC committee that I meet here in a couple of days. Regarding the river crossing update that's part of today's agenda, agenda excuse me, the public appreciates the monthly updates of the status of the study hopes that these updates could be a monthly part of the agenda. And I also hope that since the Bridge Parkway is a huge regional project, that the impact of local projects like the approved Silver Neon project in Silver Virginia South can also at some point be discussed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else? Otherwise, I will close the public comment period. All right, with that, uh, we'll move on to item number six, uh, the consent agenda. All right, do I have a motion for approval of the consent agenda as is? Move approval. All right, do I have a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
With that, we move on to item number seven, um, TIF amendments and modifications. Item A, a resolution. Item B, a resolution. And item C, a resolution for modification. And rollovers and public comment. Just to share, John is here to answer any you might have, but chance it is you didn't take all three together. Because then we'll take amendments. We have to take questions on the law. Do I have a question for So I just had a quick kind of general question. Mm -hmm. So with regards to just the new kind of FY 24 to 27 tip, have we officially switched to that? Or are we still dealing with the FY 21 to 24 tip? Uh, we have now completely switched to the FY 24, 27. The rollover amendments are bringing in any other projects that were changed or added since the uh, initial 24, 27 projects were developed back in March. And so this is the rollover. It's typically done more in like late fall, but it's just been bumped back so the rollover does it. Right. Oh. Do, I have a do I have a motion? Motion to approve. All right. Do you have a second? Second. All right. Uh, any discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. Um, aye. Any aye. opposed? All right. Motion carried. With that, we'll move to item number eight. <laughs> item 8C up to first. So we'll start with item 8C, CMAC STBD update. All right. So um, as most of the folks are aware, the CMAC STBG call for projects ended in November and SMAC has been screening as well as setting up the pre-screening meetings with everybody. I think we have everybody scheduled this week for their meeting. You can continue on, Cutter. Um, we're going to provide a one-week um, point from when the uh, we meet with everybody to get there, any submissions or changes or requests in. Um, so we're looking to end that our last day for the screening process as a result of how all the meetings, follow-up meetings in it will um, end on January 19th. Uh, we're looking to try to get scoring available by the end of the month for the February TAC, because I think the agenda would drop on the 30th and the 31st. Yeah, 31st. Um, staff has also been kind of um, uh, kind of scoping how the scoring would be. We're not anticipating any major challenges. It looks like it's going to be fairly plug and play for um, this point on um, as soon as we get a couple of items clarified from the applicants. As a whole, we had 36 projects, so every single jurisdictional locality used all their slots. Uh, we probably the largest amount of uh, projects were submitted for roadways, but we actually had a large amount of both active projects as well as um, three studies submitted. Um, just looking basically how the selection criteria um, kind of looks to fund and allocate um, the top two projects in, in each category are typically funded. And if there's any leftover amounts, uh, unrequested amounts, then it drops in. We can start picking the third, sometimes fourth. Um, just giving you an idea is, um, you know, we're probably going to have about approximately six million, I think, um, but we've had close to seventy million dollars in costs. So yeah. uh, we're going to fund about ten percent. <laughs> so go for that, uh, and we provided a list uh, in the packet of all the projects and their um, respective categories. Um, a lot of projects were dual submitted, um, some weren't, um, and right now we're not anticipating any major challenges or issues with the projects. Uh, right. So, thank you, John. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any questions? Good job. <laughs> thank you. It's starting. We'll wait for three months before yet. Depending on how our project scored. <laughs> pretty well, like you will get everything. So you will get all the scores and all the sheets. I, I tried to work with you all to get um, away from the group interpretation. So this is a better version than we had before. There's really less group for interpretation. So the staff doesn't have to interpret much. They just have to make sure they the right tool, the right set of data, plug it in. And if you had all provided the right documents, which in one or two cases there were some previous. The most popular thing was the Route 1 access management. Every single um, roadway jurisdiction submitted something along those lines. So we're going to have a pretty apples to apples for a few of um, I'm really sorry. When we were in the uh, consent agenda section, I misread the agenda. I thought the um, 
six C was under the the info items here. I just had a question about there was one um, project in the transit projects for um, the fiscal year twenty three. Uh, it was like Spotsylvania VRE station. It's had like $97,000 of CMAC money on it. I couldn't link that up with any project or anything that we have in our system. Can you explain that real quick? So, so we'd actually ask we to explain that if we look comes to us by our feed. Oh, from the stiff? Yeah. Okay. Did you say Spotsylvania or Stafford? No, it says Spotsylvania in there. So I I didn't know if that was a county project for like like local. Well, it might be a typo. Yeah, I just and I apologize for backtracking yeah, on the agenda. I thought Stafford we... projects. It could yeah. be the VRE feeder bus. Yeah. Uh, it was yes, yeah, so it was under the transit section. So I think what we should there we go ninety seven. 179 for VRE commuter rail station in Spotsylvania. I mean, my guess is that's like a holdover from the original construction of the station. I can't remember what it's the funding too, It's too late for that to still be. Consistent. Okay. So I'm guessing that it might be either it's an error so that it, it would be a future amount of staff. But can we tell what year it was? Obligated from that, would be FY23. Yeah, is that the construction of that lot? <clears throat> well, the repaving, it might be repaving. no, because it says it, in Spotsylvania, so right, I'm what's saying, but they're UDC? repaving in that. What's the UDC? I, I can't, think. uh, is that 511277? Yeah, that doesn't UPC. ring a bell. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's a federal ID versus, oh, yeah, that's not a is that not the parking lot? Yeah, it's I think 93066. It's... That that would be an old one. Yeah, I think um, it's the... it's Yeah, I, I just I, I don't recognize that project. I, I never knew that there was CMAC funding. And I didn't think that. there was and when that was more of a VDAC question. Yeah, I have to try to look that up and talk to the um, who was with that. Okay. But yeah. yeah, I think it's the Bureau of Transit Funding Project. Yeah. Yeah. There's always something that, that gets in there, you know, historically. The, so the, it's... the difficulty <clears throat> of these lists, these it also is that we just get it sent to us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Completed. Yeah, we yeah. Don't, there's not a number on there that we have to mess with. We get this get completed, and, mm -hmm. and they say, "Will you please um, sign off that agreement with the projects that happened?" And it's good that you pick that up, so we will have to go back to the people that sent us the list and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, this doesn't ring a bell. Can you explain this one?" It also yeah. says south of Erie Drive. And north of Route 17, <laughs> which does not make any sense, because Vary Drive is south of Route 17. It's likely there's an error there. Yeah. But, but I have to say that we are supposed to get the policy committee to sign off on this complete list. So if you have this query, would we ask would you start an email chain with Vida and sort this out before the policy committee, okay. so that if there's an error, we can fix it because we're supposed to approve this thing um, annually and last two years ago we got it. Why haven't you approved it yet? Message? Yeah. So we can't extensively delay this. Okay. We need to resolve. Okay. In the Y1821 tip, and it does say a uh, Spotsylvania commuter rail station. So that apparently appears to be correct, but it's if it's on that, it's probably a whole other version. Twenty one. So it could have been there might have been a small amount of CMAC money on the construction of the station back in fourteen. It was in a. So there was over a million dollars of CMAC money, over two million of CMAC. Okay, that explains it. Um, so the question is, is why would new money be put in FY23 on that? Yeah. This isn't necessarily FY23 money. No, I thought this was the 23 obligation. So the 23 expenditure. Yeah. But this is act this is actual expenditure. It's supposed to be. <laughs> okay. So I, I have to look at the expenditures also. I know that um, on this project there were outstanding right-of-way things that were resolved fairly late. Uh, and sometimes we didn't have to resolve until years after construction completed. 
Okay. Okay, yeah. And then I'll it's probably a quick query we can solve, but we just need to do it fairly soon. Cause, yeah. Because uh, otherwise on the front end the dogs don't coming at us with my reading approved the list. Right. Well and and I just brought it up because it's nowhere in any of our internal financial or project management. So like I can't even look this project up because it doesn't exist. So it is on that project and all the rest of the probably yeah. it's a, it's yeah. a left over or something. That, all right, uh, with that, we'll jump back to CMAX here, STBG. Um, was there any further discussion on this item or questions? So the one question I had was just the schedule, like, uh, so we talked about, like, just the scoring, but what would the rest of the schedule be? Uh, as far as, like, obligate uh, for project selection allocations. Yeah, when are we hoping that FAMPO will approve that? So we don't get the dollar allocations until March. So we can't begin to say how many dollars we'll put on a project until Susan emails us the actual allocation. And she, it's getting later every year. So last year it was like somewhere around my birthday, which is somewhere around the 15th of March. And then we have to have it approved by May. So it's a big rush. And so it's, we've decided to go into a two year cycle now. So we expect that in March and we'll get the dollar values. We would prefer them in February, but you know. So one suggestion with that, I know we talked about this in the fall at previous TAC meeting. Um, I would think it's safe to assume your amount. Just give us a sample of what the allocations could be. What we've done this morning, we'll start working on that. The only trick, and this is how it can be. Uh, unique is that if in the case where you have like the top projects aren't requesting the full amounts available, then it'll be a question of the third. And sometimes that, that can be relatively a small amount of uh, thirds. I think on um, like the 95 whitening was kind of the year of that last year. But what um, I could start doing is to just assume a similar amount of funding to last year and then show you that the top two projects need X amount, but in the category of roadways, there will be Y amount available. Yeah, right? I don't so want to be so, be, yeah. so we can show you a, a rough oh. split without actually formally allocating. So you'll yeah. already be able to see it's only going to be the top two projects. Category of roadways, there is only an X, whatever X amount. We can, do, we can do that and highlight. My only concern would be saying, yes, we have a project that has funding and then saying, because it was third and we thought we had more than walking it back or yeah, vice versa. So it, it will be tentative. Yeah. It's also and I think that's those dollar uh, values. It's all this theoretical. I think everyone understands for the theoretical, it would be tentative, but it would be useful when we see the scores to also see the numbers behind it on what could be happening. And we'll obviously finalize that in April, May time frame. Uh, any further discussions? All right, with that, we'll move on to item 8A, Smart Scale Round 6, December CTB meeting results and regional project. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning. So you all probably already know all this, so I'll run through it pretty quickly. So these are the summary of the final staff recommendations of the last CTB meeting in December. Um, the most important ones here, there are five. They decided to land on calculating the congestion factor to seven years in the future instead of using present metrics. They are revising the economic development measure to reflect state priorities. The number of applications happily will stay the same as in round five. Number four, they're restricting high priority projects eligibility to a list of types and they're eliminating funding step two. And number five, the big upset that came at the last minute was the removing the land use factor from the entire scoring line. So this one makes sense. The project takes six to 10 years to be built, so they're calculating for the future. Next slide. This one, they're doing a forward-looking economic development metric. They're changing that whole process. This is actually what's taking, what is causing the hang up and getting the technical guide out, I've been told, because they're trying to figure out just how to word this so that we can all understand it. So they're bringing in somebody from the outside to help them with that. The technical guide will be out any day. Next slide. 
Defining HPP eligibility, they did broaden this slightly from the October recommendation. It's still about through things, new bridges, roadway on new alignment, but they did um, revise this bottom one a little bit so that we can use MPO, transit local studies, or corridor improvements. It's still a little confusing and everybody's still looking for clarification and it's causing problems for everyone, but we're trying to muddle through. Slide. Removing step two from the funding process, everybody knows what this means. They have to be big projects. They have to compete statewide. Leverage funding is a big deal this time. Next slide. This one is a huge problem. As we know, historically, land use was the single biggest benefit to our bike head projects, our small projects. The importance cannot be overstated. So this is changing everything for us. Sure. Next slide. So we know round six will look very different. Without a land use metric, a project's location will be less important, which for planners, that's got us all scratching our heads. Um, localities will have to submit small projects. We can't do it for you. Uh, bike head must be part of a roadway project and is not going to help us score well as it did in previous rounds. Um, projects competing statewide now, local match is essential, and free applications are coming up. VDOT should have already gotten anything that you need assistance on, so I hope you all got everything in. And the technical guide draft, I promise, will be out to comment imminently. Hey, Carrie, can we go back to the last slide? Yes, I, I had some. Yes. Okay, so um, I, I, you know, fully get, you know, land use, removing that metric is a major issue. Another very serious concern we saw, though, in looking at this is that with safety criteria, so, so we're in category B. Yeah. And safety is a metric that projects in our region and just statewide tend to score well. And basically, the rest of the state, everyone got a boost in that criteria, but we did not. That's a good point. Um, we ended up getting a boost in other kind of areas. And the congestion and accessibility, our projects do not score well. You might say, well, well why is that? Well the, well, the congestion, the issue is that the, the way they've historically done smart skill, and I guess we'll have to look at the technical guide to see if it's so the way this time, but they they normalize things based on the top project in the states. Typically, the project the top project in the state is some major interstate project at Hampton Roads or kind of Northern Virginia. Uh, and I'll say, even if you pick a project like I-95, like in our region, it doesn't have much congestion relative to these bigger projects. So like these top Northern Virginia or Hampton Roads projects will get like 100. And then like the next project down the list, we'll get like a two, and that's like a 1.5, one. And if, if you're getting a large percentage of your score, like on a, on a such a small number, it ends up that most of the um, projects in the state get almost nothing for that. Um, so, so having that congestion score be higher for us relative to type C and B, D is, is not a good thing. Uh, and then the accessibility, the issue with that is basically uh, most of the state, you have a relatively large center city relative to the uh, close to the suburban population. Uh, but with us, Fredericksburg is not as big as the other kind of center cities. If you look at you know, Roanoke or Richmond or Charlottesville. So in, in that accessibility criteria is all based on access to jobs, how close you are. The close jobs to us are in Northern Virginia or DC uh, for the most part. And, and those are a long ways away. So, so we have very low accessibility scores. So I'll say basically the change there basically for the the type B, it doesn't impact the district grant program, but for the, the high priority project, it's going to make it more difficult for our projects to be selected relative, relative to the rest of the state than in round five. And that should not be underestimated. So, so, so I completely get, you know, we can't submit bike pet projects for a high priority. That's a big deal. But I think the bigger pro issue is for all projects, our projects are not going to score as well. So you, so the gains that we got from switching from A to B have been somewhat lost. Well, we're we're probably still better off being in B than A mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, because the the A basically is forty five and yeah. thirty five. But and I guess I don't know. It may just be too late to say anything. But uh, I don't know if we can give a comment at the state of you know why wasn't the safety um, the type B kind of increased to some extent? Why why was all the the fifteen percent put in congestion and accessibility if I mean, let's just say it was five, five, and five instead of zero, ten, and five. They uh, that would have been a better result for us. They seemed to think that all of the losses that land use, take, removing land use, 
they seemed to think they could make up for that with accessibility. They seemed to think it was the same thing. Yeah. They didn't understand land use at all. So and that's primarily because of the third accessibility measure is directed at multimodal options. Yeah. Can I just clarify something on that table? The pluses, um, are those definitely additive so that, for example, type A safety, the new um, allocation would be 15 plus 10. So in that box, there would now be uh, 25. No, or it should all add up to 100%. Is the 10 built into the 15? The 10 is built in. Yeah. Because that, you need, we need clarity on that because that's an important issue. The 10 is built in. So if you look at B, for instance, it's 25, 25, 50. So safety, 70, 90, so for, so for type A, safety is gone from 5% to 15%. Is that what you're yes. telling me? Yes. Yep. So, so our safety benefit is 20% and theirs is 15 currently now under the new system. Yes. One thing, there was a, a lot of comments about the CTV seemed to want to make safety even higher. Um, and there's a lot of comments about, well, Vita already has a safety. Right. So that's a part of why they didn't add. I mean, they added some to safety, but I think they had wanted to add even more to safety at a certain point during the CTV meeting as well. It was what, eight or nine hour meeting, but. Yeah, it was a whole lot of arguing. Yeah. yeah. Did they identify um, funding streams that could be made up by the, the change to the bike bed projects having to be part of a roadway? Is it like TAP or? Yeah, they were like, oh, there's TAP. Yeah, or like you know, other regional, smaller regions. Yeah, because it that seems like a key at funding, but that's just <laughs> so, so I'm concerned as Paul is. I mean, I was away in the December meeting happened, and so I've been hearing the bits and pieces as we get back into the swing of things. And frankly, I I'm quite I think that land use used to help us enormously. Is it not and, just for bike pedal, but for a lot of our salon? And and we've been screwed there, and as Paul points out, they've bumped up these other things. But not our safety. We're going to get screwed there. Mm -hmm. we, we are going to struggle. The yeah. question is, Paul's one. Like, is it too late to fix it? I suspect it is. But that, you know, what then likely will happen is that we'll score badly. Everyone will be angry, and <laughs> then the next sense. round they'll be screaming from our side again. But but frankly, we can see it coming. So. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm gonna do is to have a meeting with our CTB member uh, who did reach out to me, but then got COVID. So I haven't actually met with them to just talk through this. Because this is concerning. It seems like, you know, bumping up safety in type C and E really does prioritize the two lane roadway, rural projects, you know, intersections, that kind of thing. For the past couple rounds, people have been complaining, well, those are not getting funded at the same rate as the big interstate or the big transit project or the bike bed project. So it's a completely mixed up system though, because if you're trying to prioritize the bigger projects, which they say they are, then those aren't going to score very well anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's it's yeah. just it's if people who, who go into these meetings who are not planners or engineers right. are making these decisions. And frankly, I think we need to acknowledge they don't even represent anybody mm -hmm. because the only person they represent is the person who appointed them. They are not elected. There are appointed people who do not necessarily have any planning or engineering experience, and they're deciding how to score projects. It's 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 a really flawed system. Um, one other point I'll mention on congestion calls because I know we talked about it a little bit. Does anyone have any current thing on what might be the big project that gets submitted? Um, obviously, round three, we had Hampton Road Bridge Tunnel, which got like three or four million dollars in HPP funding. Round five, it was I-64 Gap, which got a hundred, two hundred million dollars in funding. So those will certainly impact us significantly. There's no large project submitted. Our congestion scoring will likely be higher. If there is, it will likely be lower than we hoped. So the, the trouble is we won't know. Right. It's hard to find out because you don't know what Hampton Road. Hampton Road has always got yet another piece, right? There's always another piece which we couldn't get funded last round. So they're always going to have another piece. And Northern Virginia, you know, they switch between the, 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 the 
three main corridors, right? So, oh yeah, we fixed that big one. Now we're gonna move to the other one again. So it's just an ongoing list of projects. Yeah. You is like Ian said, we, we don't know what it is, but they're gonna have something. Right. It just takes one. <laughs> just right. takes it one. just takes one basically that makes everyone else's congestion scores go to nil. Yep. Do you think a strategy for this region is actually to go the opposite direction? A lot of very small but very impactful projects, like yeah. million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar project. Yeah, and but but put in the maximum amount and just really, you know. To the, to the extent that like a bike ped project would improve safety, maybe it's you know with a minor roadway modification, but it's really a bike ped project. Is that more impactful? Because you're going to get one of those or two of those, and that might be more you know than the a nine ninety five widening or a slow lane there. or something. Mm -hmm. What's that? Will you though? Will you? On what basis would you say you will get one or two of those? But this is HPP. We don't get yeah, district funding. Uh, They're not even eligible. Sure. Yeah. The, the district brand, we could still do that, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the hard thing is without seeing the technical guide, it's hard to say what the yeah, how to strategy finesse uh, the project, yeah, the high priority would be. be. Yeah, I guess the question on so I know we're going to get the draft any day, but is that you know the final guide or is it like a draft and then there'll be a revised draft? It's draft, we're supposed to provide comments. Oh, sorry, Tessie, a draft, and then you guys will provide comments if you have any, and then we'll get the full one out yeah. in February. So it's really that economic portion is what they're they're finishing up. Last minute. I guess okay. so, one question so on the topic. Go ahead. The timing about that worries me. Yeah. Because yeah. Are we gonna? I mean, we may have one to special tech because if they say you've got to get your comments in by the day before the next tech meeting, it would be inadvisable. Thankfully, we now have the opportunity to have an online meeting, which we never had last year because we've changed the rules. But if I would suggest that we give the chair the authority to call a special tech meeting if we see the deadline for submitting comments on that um, handbook is before the next tech meeting so that we don't get short of nothing. I would point out some of the things you just said about that category and whatever else. We don't know what other monsters are going to be in this thing. Yeah, we would support that. And I guess what I would say is we should be virtually, but um, I would say maybe we should just kind of plan that to have that. Because I mean, even if it's after the next tech, I mean, it probably won't be that far after. It's going to be, let's see, comments are due on February 6th. That would be a good situation for us to debate it the first time on the 5th and then kind of, you know, we need to submit it the next day. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe we should just schedule a workshop. I don't know. I'm thinking aloud, yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah, I've been waiting for an opportunity, but I will have a significant number of comments on the transparency of House Music Scores projects. Mm -hmm. I actually would like to include those. Do we have any vague idea when the draft will be available? Uh, it's supposed to be early this week. So, I'm hoping the latest is Wednesday. So, this week. Mm -hmm. So, do you all want to look at your calendars now and take that time? Mm -hmm. to Need to discuss that. I mean, we're gonna to have to read it first. It's not a good meeting if none of us have read the thing. But I'm guessing it's gonna be before the February tech. We might want to get together just a special meeting. Here's a question. Um River Cross and Cargo Studies next week. Yeah. Okay. Does everybody want to look at their calendar? Because if we have to try and get all of you by email and phone to pick a date and time. It's going to take longer than if we can pick it now. We're saying the guide comes out next week. This week. This should week. be this week. Okay. okay. So, so we one day holiday. Or tempo meets yeah. in case you know they had to take some action or mm. prove some kind of letter. Tempo meets on the 22nd. Yeah, so that makes sense. Mm. So next week. My Wednesday morning is wide open. That's the 17th. Mm -hmm. But my dog isn't in the smoke, so. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm warning is free. We have the, the road crossing stakeholder meeting coming to two until 3 30. But other than that, we can shift the other what we have on our on the next day. The Thursday, pretty open during the day, except for between 1 and 1 30. Map and stuff are available on the Thursday. 
Yes. When does the policy agenda have to go? Probably on the Wednesday, the 17th. Yes. I am free on Tuesday in the afternoon and Thursday in the afternoon and all of Friday next week. Wednesday is booked up with meetings. Stafford. I'm assuming you guys want me. Yeah. <laughs> what about Tuesday late? So Tuesday we, afternoon. We would not be able to meet Tuesday afternoon. That's our board meeting time. So, so on Thursday afternoon, what time were you thinking we do at the transportation committee for the county? Mm -hmm. Meets like in the evening, six. I mean, I'm free after lunch. Yeah, probably free after. Yeah. Um. I, I think we could do the Thursday, maybe even yeah. a virtual option in case we can get right here in person. What if we don't? Uh, is there somebody from the city available on Thursday the 18th? Oh, we're talking the afternoon. Same time after 2 30. Mike, are you available? I, I'm. Yes, sir. And I can change the transportation meeting. Oh, is that, what's, is that what that? Yeah. At 2. That's at 2. Yeah. Well, what time were you thinking? Okay. okay. And it'd be virtual. We will have that. Are you we free? can do it either way. We can do it private or we can do it more <laughs> I could do 3 p.m. in person and I can do it very virtual. Let's do virtual. And do you want it at 2 30 or something? Uh, Madam Deputy Chair. <laughs> <laughs> whatever Basam and Mike are free. Um, uh, gotta... yeah, whatever. The, the idea is actually <clears throat> to prep the policy committee in case we need them to write something. If we wait for the agenda, we can have an item, item, item out of I will, at your request, I will email out on Thursday night a addendum to the agenda. Huh. So That's, is that good with everyone? Yeah. Okay. Is there any official action needed on that, or we just? No, no you yeah. need to just instruct the chair, who is you, yes. to call a meeting, and if everybody's in favor, say aye. Okay. Aye. 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 We're, good. we're having a meeting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Virtual meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Virtual meeting. Thursday, eighteenth at two thirty. Yes. Virtual. Wait, Thursday now or Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday, Thursday two thirty p.m. Virtual. Yeah. Please all read the document as much as you can before the meeting so that we can make some useful input. Yeah. And, and we'll send those in that a much of that. Yes. Carrie, do you want to move on to the uh, last slide? Yes, I do. I do. Right. There we go. I'll make that larger. All right. So I want to give a caveat before Carrie starts. This is really hard. Yeah, it uh, is. It's really hard this year because the goalposts have changed so many times. And so, honestly, what we at a staff level did is just try and give you some suggestions, right? It's not cast in concrete. We're just giving you some suggestions based on what we know today, which is an imperfect situation that we have, as you've just all heard going through the problems. So, words right on my all right, so all of that said, here are our proposed regional candidate projects. The ones in yellow are already in the portal, and our VDOT friends are starting to work on them. With number six, however, has a star by it because what is what was originally in the portal was Butler Road widening, but we propose, and Cassie already knows this, to add the quadrant roadway intersection of Butler One and Route One. I'm sorry, Butler Road and Route 1, which adds to the price, but also adds significantly to its liability as a project. So, because the first one is not actually on the corridor, so it was just, yeah. just to add to that, um, Ian, if you remember, I had asked uh, for a model run of Butler Road. I mean, it did show upwards of a 6 to 7% reduction in congestion on Route 1. Quarter of statewide cities. Yes, but so, and, you know, as I said, this is just us giving up guidance. You can throw it all away, but we are concerned that because this um, first, well, the one part of this two part project is not actually on the point, we're worried that it, it's going to run into difficulties. Or, or state lights, it's delaying edge. 
we could talk about it. You had seemed to be pretty open to this idea. Yeah, our, our original proposal was just for Butler Road, but I mean, I'm not going to vote against it. So, yeah. Well, no, I mean, good. More than that, you seemed interested in. Well, I don't want just for them to say, oh, it's not on a card or a state like certificate. Well, state it's, not it's not required. It's not required, yeah. It's not required, but it does help. Um, okay, so number seven, Enon Road Center Park Parkway connector. Um, number eight, Route 3 pipeline, whatever comes with this. There are certainly some important things that could happen there. Route 3 widening for the plains, west of Harrison Road to west of Wendora Drive, and whatever comes of the Route 208 pipeline study, levels road intersection. Um, so VDOT was already developing process on that one. Those are the ones that we suggested be added to the list. And now it's open to your discussion, but those are our suggestions. So you have to explain, sorry, yeah. we'll, we'll yes. explain what's below that. Okay, so what's below that were, so the ones at the very bottom were dropped off of here because they're on the local list. We removed those. Um, and the last two, um, so the Route 639 star study, that one is 90% bike pet. So we unfortunately need to take that off, unfortunately. If it was, that's an important, very important corridor. So if it was roadway improvements, it would certainly belong. Um, but because it's primarily a bike ped, it's not going to screen in. Um, the 208 pipeline study is from Smith Station Road intersection. We could talk about either of those, that, that one or Levels Road, but we believe that the Le Levels Road intersection was a bit more important. So go ahead and discuss. So before we get into the specifics of yes. the projects, I guess I just wanted to know about the process. Of what are we trying to do today? Is there a deadline? Do this be like we have to decide today what the original projects are? I say like I I, I think we sent out an email about this right for the holidays with the pipeline study is in Spotsylvania, basically for Route 208, uh, for Route 3, which is also in the city, uh, and then basically the Route 639. They're basically still kind of developing, and basically we we don't have what the study recommendations are at this point, um, in in a, in a in a more final state. Uh, we, we have a Route 28, and I think it's scheduled later this week, I think on the 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be an update, I guess, to 639 later this month. Um, I know we're trying to schedule a Route 3 meeting. Um, I'll say that these are big studies uh, that have like, you know, a couple hundred million dollars in basically recommendations coming from them. The question of how to best package them is kind of at this point, since we don't have a technical guide, basically from... Um, See that. And and basically until we look at the details of that, we're not really going to know kind of uh maybe what would be the best type of project to, to score. I'll say basically with regards at least to the spots of any projects on this list, I mean it looks like maybe I'm not criticizing, but it looks like this was maybe the latest and greatest as of late October. Like a lot of stuff has changed since then. I'll say the Route 639 study does actually have a significant highway component to it, including a major intersection project, the Route 3. Um, so that is one that we're interested in kind of having on one of the regional lists, but it just seems kind of premature basically to be trying to kind of decide exactly what our projects are today. If you go back to the HPP eligibility requirements, does the major intersection on Route 3, does it, is it, is it one of the requirements? Does it be one? Yes, of it's Innovative Intersections Quadrant Roadway. Is it a quadrant project. roadway? Yeah, it's a big intersection project. Okay. And it's a pipeline study recommendation, which I believe is what was added. Okay. Yeah, the, well, the 639, I, I think I might have at one point called it a pipeline study. It's actually a star study, but I'm not actually sure what exact difference is, but it's yeah. very similar. They are very close. Yeah. Um, okay. So the drawings that, so these all come from submissions we received, right? And the drawings that we got on that project show very little <coughs> new capacity roadway. That is, that was the only highway. If, it shows it shows lots and lots and lots of bike head on the drawing. The drawing doesn't show actual capacity. It shows well, it's a change. That's capacity, yeah. That part is that part is highway. I know Paul, well, one thing we did last year obviously was have a place sort of their pipeline study. Um, and that seemed to work pretty well. I think that was done statewide last year and will be done statewide again this year, uh, depending on schedules. So let's go back to the schedule because, as Paul says, yeah. what is the schedule? Because that's a nitty gritty thing that we can talk about. But I am concerned about getting things done pretty quickly. All are. Um, as far as specific projects, we can discuss that. Just go back to the schedule. But the March, schedule is March. What 
What's date in March? And what do we have to have ready by March? The pre so yeah, all the documents for the pre applications have to be done. Is it earlier than March 31st? Or is that was that in June or July? You were out of office. Oh, that. Yeah, I'm not here. That's true. Yeah. March 22nd. Okay. But I am going to be cross training other people. Okay. It's not going to be all me this round. I learned my lesson last time. However, we have to have our applications in, not in development. They have to be in yeah. free applications. applications in. On yeah, the I'm going to be out of the country. I'm going to be in Turkey. But I think one of the goals is just, you know, stop leaving this up to the last minute and try to make those decisions sooner rather than later as soon as possible. But it definitely helps with clarity as well. And on the Stafford side, we're obviously VDOT supporting us with some of the projects, but um, you know, Enon Road and Center for Parkway Connector, we'd be doing that project, uh, funding it ourselves to do the application support and everything. So clarity on that is needed as soon as possible because that does take time to do. So with regards to those two in white below the ones in the red stars, um, we talked about this at a start, but we're not opposed to you swapping out, right? And so if you think that one of those is better than one of the others, we're not saying no. We're just saying those are the ones we have available to use that we know of. Yeah, Mr. Chair, nope. Mr. Chair, trying to get your attention. No, we're good. You are, you're good. Um, in fact, I had chosen Route 30, Route 639 at first, um, but we had a discussion about there being not enough highway and too much bike path. But... We think all the scores are going to come out of the highway this round. So you've got to focus on that. And that bike path is going to be a liability. So I I appreciate that and understand that. And just, mm -hmm. I guess, to delve a little bit into the details of Route 639 star study and the Route 3 pipeline study. So the two studies are basically, well, the study here is merge. Yeah. And basically what we're looking at, and we're, we will be meeting with VDOT this afternoon to talk about smart scale sum, but basically with the Route 639 project that Northern Part of the study area overlaps with route three of having some of the route three improvements in with that and that's like one project and there's another one on the pipeline now so with the route three pipeline study i mean one of the changes i think it happened since last october is basically what's shown there is actually not going to be ready for smart scale round six uh, that's going to be a smart scale round seven project but we don't but, have any but what is but what is available well, you know, the study, the study for basically what we're looking at is actually uh, was was completed basically um, I think over a year ago. The, the part we're looking at is the part in the middle, uh, which is like west of Salem Church and east of Harrison. So it's like a different section of Route Three. And and this like was again a huge study, like all these big innovative intersections. Uh, yes, it's eligible for basically uh, the high priority. Basically, that that's a VTrans core need. How we would score well. Um, so, I mean, but exactly like what the projects are, we're not like in a position to t today to tell you, you know, these are the limits, these are the improvements. We're still waiting for basically more information from the state studies. We, we agree. We agree that those studies need to give us more information. And we're looking at VDOT to say, can you urgently push on the gas? Because we do have to make this choice and we've got to prepare the documents for the 31st of March. So we agree with you. Did you just say, what did you just say about the Route 3 study? So, so Route 3, so to explain kind of what happened, yes. there was an initial Route 3 study. Yes. Which went from basically west of Endura Drive all the way to west of 95, and that was completed. Yes. But kind of the part kind of closer to 95, uh, basically, yes. um, you know, there's some questions on what would be the best improvements. So there's kind of like an update of that that's yes. being done. Mm -hmm. But, and again, I guess pass it, correct me if I'm wrong, like my understanding is what's shown there is not going to be ready for round six. It's going to be a round seven like the project. I think there are questions on a lot of these projects based on specifics with a, from a readiness point of view. Mm -hmm. So even if there are two concepts, depending on what other studies, whether it's, um, you know, OSAR type studies, if you're near interchanges, uh, like, so I just wanted to bring this up because I kind of mentioned this to Matthew on Friday. So the Butler Road one, we would have to have environmental look at that and decide what documents would need to be done. Um, 
if we want to do that approach, we have to say it, it might not be ready because that quadrant is going to be a more historical site, and that was going to have a bigger historical impact adding that quadrant portion to the Butler Burbs, where we thought we were just going to be impacting. I was talking to Matthew about it. The park, we can't touch that with the one about the road. You have to hit the houses on the other side. Um, stuff like that that our environmental group is going to have to look at. And I know that Swagger uh, Roadway, Peter and Stephen um, were worried about that section that didn't have um, a bigger impact. We definitely want to discuss this stuff with you early in this presentation. But that's the the intersection project that had a smaller footprint was an EA, and for example, that's why the signal pole is brown, and that was part of the coordination with historic districts, uh, you know, some things like that. And so, it just there, there's just a lot of legwork that goes into that. So, I think those are some of the reasons that it's so critical that there is a list of the regional projects that are important, so that you know, a year prior to the smart scale application, those things can start making it. It's just that the window of time, and I, I understand all of the processes with, um, you know, having committees and the buying and everything else, and it just doesn't really give that much time from, you know, just more involved. So I don't believe if you're, Suggesting that we need to come up with our projects a year beforehand. I don't think that's possible. I, I don't know that it's specifically having a which one you're committing to, but to understand that if there are projects like that one want to move forward as a smart scale application, to be aware that it will be a longer process to get to a point. So part of our problem is, and I agree with your problem, yeah. but you need to also understand our problem. We constantly get asked to come up with project ideas before the CTB meets and throws out all the criteria. And, and it's just, there's no point us coming up with projects too early because they were then just a waste of time. However, I'm even more worried about the statement I heard in this room Tim, two minutes ago, which says that those pipeline studies are not going to be prepared projects for round six. We, we have these studies forced on us, right? We never asked for these studies. The so CTB and we not forced those studies on us. And with the idea that those studies produce smart scale ready projects. So we agreed to them, right? Almost, you know, like you have to have them. And now we're told, oh, but they won't actually produce smart scale projects. Yeah. This whole environment is it's just not conducive to producing good smart scale projects. They're going to rethink when the pipeline studies get handled. Now we're in a situation where we don't know, yes or no, whether elements of those studies are going to be still. It's frustrating. Maybe one thing, maybe what Kathy is saying is we need to prioritize the list of regional projects so they can start thinking about how to develop actual smart scale projects out of it. Like not saying, an exact project, but hey, in a couple of rounds, we might want to do this. Start thinking about what's needed for this to line it up for yeah, the next couple of rounds. You know that Falmouth Interception is a regional priority that something needs to be priority, not, not a project. Where we can have conversations and bring planning and traffic into that, bring environmental into that to find out what needs to be done to do the right projects. Even if it's a, you know, not environmentally sensitive area that requires work on the interstate. There are studies that have to be done prior to that. Like it could be a very simple project, frankly, that touches the interstate, but we still have to check a box and getting that study done it takes time, whether it's, you know, actually just doing the study or gathering the background data. So, you know, and I think some of it is that when the pipeline studies, you know, we, we do say where we want those, um, you know, Collectively, those are discussed of where where we would want to study the area, and then specifically within those areas, what we want to. So, if we know that something that may touch the interstate is going to have a different readiness level, and you want to have something that is going to be this round, maybe you don't study that particular location. So let's you know, talk. It's 
No, to me. So let's talk about that for a second. Surely this tax should be part of the process of discussing what things would be needed from pipeline studies. Because that doesn't happen. Pipeline studies are discussed without them, though. And then we're told that they will produce small scale ready projects, and then they don't. And then we come to this position where we now have to pick projects out of some unknowns. And surely we should start with the first bit of a discussion with these people who have counties and jurisdictions and us as staff to say, what are the priority areas in the region that need attention? And then for BDOC to craft pipeline studies that somehow line up with those priority areas. And then we can also assess in each pipeline study how much can we get out of the pipeline study. We might only be able to get it. At least then those things all line up, but the ones that don't line up. I don't, I don't disagree with that, and I think with the pipeline studies, I'm I'm not advocating that you only look at the things that could be immediately ready for this round of smart scale application, but just so that everyone's expectations are managed accordingly, so that you know you, you do realize that this may be an opportunity to study this location, and we know it's not going to be ready for this round, but it's important to study it, so we're still going to keep it as part of it. And we're going to have that, you know, geared up to look at for the next round. And, you know, I think we we all have to react to the changes that come. Um, you know, we are very much in the same position. We are trying to react to those things. And so I think from, from all of our point of view, if we can have the list of those regional needs and priorities, and, and the list may be this long, and we may have this many applications, and so we then look to see what is on the list that meets whatever the current rules are to be most likely, but then at least we can have something to, to work from, to react to. And that's some of the things that we talked about when Cassie and I talked to all the different groups about the smart scale applications is, you know, any of the projects, any of the needs. So let's see, you talked about needs and not projects, but any of the needs, let us know. We can start maybe working on thoughts and ideas outside of some of the smart scale process so that they can take that and let it kind of maybe fall into whether it's a TA or a revenue sharing application or smart scale to try to get the needs met with whatever the rules are that you um, want. Okay. But, so let's just go back to where we are in the process and what we have to do. So okay. in front of us is a picture. Right. And by the 31st, somehow out of this picture, we have to produce 10 projects that have to go into the small scale. Sounds form. like we need to remove the Wait. Route 3 pipeline Wait, study. Right. No, just not well, okay. it's a different part of the Route 3 pipeline. That's what I'm study. saying. Change out the one that's there, right? So, so don't do anything yet. Oh. Let's do this in a process of order. Which of those, let's say the 10, can we leave on the list? that we believe will produce a project that will be ready for the March, March the 31st. Let's just see how many we've got that work. So I'll just come from the Stafford perspective. The Stafford projects, the five that are on there, with Butler Road just being the widening, it's good to go on our end. Um, in terms of the on road project, we'd be supporting that project ourselves. Uh, BDAP would be helping with the other four projects. Um, so that's out of the six mini gold, yellow color, uh, I'm just trying to look there through that is this gold one. Six. So all six of those are, are five. Well, that's on, that's you're saying if you're doing Enon Road, then that's seven, right? I'm just talking about staff perspective. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Those um, all those projects. And Fredericksburg needs to say whether you're. US one and three interchange operational. It's good to go. Yeah, we, we you guys loaded it, we appreciate that. That's that's okay. Okay, so the gold ones, then the red star ones, but which of those are fine and we don't need to overly mess with them right now? Enon. All projects. So numbers. So with the route three, I'm going to call them east, middle, and west. Okay. Eight is east. 
Uh, based on what we've heard from GDOT, that's not going to be ready to smart scale round seven. Um, so that's the one I've been. The number nine is the west. That is going to be ready. And basically, the middle is like not showing up. That, that is ready. So, Paul, my query is where did you hear from BDOT? Because that study has not even had a meeting. They've just said so. So, you're telling us now of this Well, room, Kathy's just said that so. That study's not going to produce anything. Well, this round yeah, produce something, yeah. but not in time for this round. But what I, and I'm not speaking to any specific one of these. I'm saying that if any of them require, um, for example, if it needs an OSAR, that we need to have that done, we need to look to see what can be done prior to. Um, I'm not saying right now that 100% something doesn't meet readiness. I'm saying it's a concern for any of these. If it does need, you know, the or the IS, then we can sort of and if it means any kind of the interstate type of force. That's a concern. And I think that this one was going to trigger something. So so part of the problem there is not just that it may do that. Part of the problem is we haven't had a meeting of that group since June, July. Um, I think there was a maybe one like an early fall. I think that was it. We haven't we heard nothing from that study. It's gone. So that's part of the problem. So yes, Paul, I, I think there are some problems there. So the other three, Paul, the other three with stars, they're okay. Well, actually, the Enon Road is, is, is uh, yeah. The nine and ten, you're okay with those. So, so with the route to it, but like so that again is kind of evolving. Like we were developing, we we haven't needed on that on the bottom, which we can't throw in us. Okay, too. I mean, I think I would prefer just route to a pipeline to be at this point, not to delineate like what the specific improvement is. And certainly basically the, the levels road intersection is something we're, we're looking at, including NA application, but Smith Station is also important and there might be some other improvements there too. It, it, it's, it's a big portal. It's not just a couple of intersections. It's looking for Bloomsbury on the west side, I think Woodlawn on the east side. So it's several miles of 208 and there are other intersections and other improvements involved. And so we're at this point, we don't have cost estimates for anything. So, so we don't want to probably submit everything because it could be a hundred million yeah. dollar project. So 10 or 11 will produce something, but what you're saying is we don't know right now what it is. Yes. Correct. Okay. So out of 10 and or 12, 11. it's a little bit of the same situation with route 639. We have a big intersection project developing in route three. Um, and we we did have a good meeting right before the holidays, and that's done a lot of good work on this. But it, but again, we don't have cost estimates of anything. We we don't have this innovative intersection how much it's going to cost. And with that being the situation, we don't know what else can maybe be included. Again, we don't want to have a hundred million dollars. So so one to seven at nine, we think is work, and then eight, ten, eleven, and twelve. Questions.
Um, and then, let's see, let me see. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to figure out which ones have had, like, that came from, like, data studies that we can kind of move forward with, because I don't want to just assume that just because we covered data study in the past, that like, we're going to make that one. Um, so the Center Fort Parkway to US-1 interchange, is that one? I bought it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. And then, um, I-95 exit 136 interchange modification. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Same pipeline. Yeah. Okay. And then Morton Road widening. That one has not as studied a bunch. Or was that the one that? Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah. Other than the TA from the high school and the master plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank what kind of documents might be done for that? Well, let me do that two more to choose. So I guess I, I had a couple questions. So going back to basically the uh, the X136 uh, study, could number one and number four be combined to so the same study? They theoretically could. Um, however, at the last TAC meeting, uh, the decision had to be made by December 1st. Um, and don't have too much information to make that decision if it needed to be combined or not. So we could combine it, um, but that at this point, because we submitted two separate projects, that would be up to VDOT uh, if it could be combined. So I guess a question on number five. So basically, we, we talked about with the HPP, basically how the, the rules are changing. And unfortunately, it's just looking pessimistic for all of these than it did a month ago. Um, with that project, so basically with the changes that the CTB did, the city is now getting four local applications instead of three. This is a suggestion, but I think your chances of getting that be much better under the district grant than under the HPP. Yeah, we don't have a lot of projects that compete in the HPP pool, uh, so we need to use those local slots to kind of fill in. We have, we have a high active need. Uh, that's what we have to say. We need to focus on that with our district grants. Uh, this is a major project. Uh, it's well in the HPP program. That, that's why we put it forward. It would be eligible for HPP under um, the local. I'm not, I'm not debating that it's not eligible. I'm just saying that basically the district grant, it could be a shoe in and basically the HPP, it's not guaranteed that it's going to be selected. I understand that, but we've got, a, we've got other application slots we need to fill for the district grant. So. We need a four? When I say basically on the HPP list, if it's not coming from basically a state pipeline or basically a star study, I mean, you're probably going to have to have a significant amount of leverage funding to make it competitive. Uh, I, I guess I just use kind of number three or basically number nine in Spotsylvania as an example, like where most, if not all of those are not coming from a state you study. You, you need to have a lot of leverage funding to make that happen. So basically just... It's not like round five where you could have a project and submit it and just have a good chance of getting it selected. And that land use kind of um, category going away really hurts us. Mm -hmm. And that change basically with the safety not being increased relative to the rest of the state of accessibility congestion going up. Just, just keep that in mind. So I appreciate the feedback, Paul. I really do. Um, just on number two, the I 95 widening, that project has never scored well. And we submitted it. Three or five rounds, four or five rounds, and at, obviously when the CTB or CTB at the work staff made the recommended changes, they did a scenario how the new project would score, and it, it did not change its ranking significantly. So what? That's an important project. If you're getting that funded, is the most important project on this list. Okay. Benefits staff, or basically if that is all congested, things southbound are going to be kind of instead of the bottleneck being a garrison bill, it'll be basically a River be all backed up in the separate. So, so it's important. Well, it doesn't back up that far today. It only so backs up it's around. Important basically having that on the list. But um, well, what, that doesn't what I'm up. hoping, what what I'm hoping here though is that uh, that particular project keep it on the application list. And we get it on the CTV list for smart scale. That, I don't want to take that off. That is the only way that it's going to get funded, and that is a way to get it funded. And if we succeed, great. If we fail. It's going to waste a slot because it will not get funded again on the regular list. 
Right. It's just not got doesn't small well. I mean, I sit in that traffic every day. Only time I only places I've been to is southbound, not northbound. So long term, it's going to be needed. The problem is you can't get to actually get there. So if they don't choose it, it's going to just waste a slot again. For the the ninety five one, um, you may they want to consider a break in the bar because if southbound is still better based on the needs, they will also require I don't understand why. Because you have to be bigger, corporate, cost lower, you know, in the southbound, yeah. but that would include noise walls that would be on the northbound side yeah. because of the traffic, which is adding on southbound, but then those walls would be in place if there were a northbound. Future. It wouldn't have to be constructed. And so it would reduce the cost of the northbound a little. Is that what you suggested? Okay, I understand that now. Thanks. So it's, yeah, I mean, I don't think there would be some. It may make it more fundable if it's only the south piece and then coming back. And just you know, different things to think about when you're trying to determine strategy. Does the VDAM have the ability to kind of break out like the, the estimate for kind of smart school round ball was like 134 and a half million? We, we are both directions. Southbound. Okay, so, so you can tell us like you know, southbound is 70 million and northbound is 65 million. That's, 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 okay. that's helpful information. Thanks. Paul, oh, what about the time? Right. This problem is that. Talking about the VCR trail? Yeah. What I've heard sometimes is that it's probably only going to be viable if it's built as part of the wide. But then we look at smart scale rules, and in previous rounds, we couldn't combine those two things because it was expressly prohibited. And so, where are we currently in terms of like the rules and in terms of the perfectibility of the cost structure? Because it balloons, it becomes a more expensive project and a bigger project, but also it might be especially out because it's not an option. So, so I would say that's a great question. Uh, I, I would think that for that to be possible, we'd have to do both of that kind of thing. But that's kind of more of a need out question. Uh, so, what I know that when you have a problem with that. Tunnel is the cost of it. It's then gonna basically balloon um, given the widening. So then it might, unless we had leverage funds, it would probably kind of hurt. That would be that would be the biggest obstacle. Um, I will check with OVP if if that is included with the widening, if that would even be allowed. Um, I'm not even sure how they're gonna. The reason I'm asking that question now is because we won't get to ask that question again for I, another several years. Yeah. So I'm asking it no, now so we can sort of clarify yeah. what the position is and then we make a good decision now in the next months as to what we put in as the submission. So so this is kind of the thought I have like on kind of like major trail projects, which can be zero trail is one because we want to one we don't bring us another kind of option. The state has that kind of the trail money. Somehow, like a bunch of areas in the western part of the state got their trails put on the list. We could legislatively figure out how to get like our trails on that list. I mean, there's a funding source, and it's like major money. It's like yeah. 10 million there. So I, I don't know how you do that, but um, I think that's what we need to do to get like major state money signed. That's true. Well, and then with also with that tunnel, uh, and I know it's been brought up numerous times. There's no connection on the one side. Um, so yeah. then we would just be. There will be. There will be. I know. In the plan. I, I, I know. It's not I mean, in it's any. It's not in any fund. I've got any fund. It's a lot of the wish and idea of hope. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I understand the, the long term plan. Yeah, but but it's. Quiet. 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 
Oh, this project is being built in Vermont. Yeah, you don't have the two trails already coming up to this. And this is the you do have one. So that now someone can turn around on the other side of the interstate to go back to where we instead of turn around. I mean, we, we have to see what the results of revenue sharing are, but BDOT does, uh, the county does have a big widening of Harrison Road, which includes the shared use path on the west side of 95 back to San Juan Church. Well, I, I think the part basically just to get this is the, was the part that was still on the church to like uh, Harrison Village and carriage kind of lane there basically uh that was in the, what was in the bigger project which requested one line but majority of the funding on that though is not going to be state it's going to be town funding that's the 102 million dollar bond referendum that's what you found and we're just trying to get what the state on the can okay so where are we on this are we saying that we've got some projects <laughs> that we can work on Putting in the portal and some that we have to wait to the year after the next meetings of these studies and then decide whether there's a project or which project to submit. We have two or potentially we... three slots. Okay, so we are going to then what make that decision at the next tag? Well, you need to know how much time is going to be needed to go from the tag decision and the policy committee decision. To actually putting it in the portal. So you've got to work back from the end. You can't ask what does the tab want. It's got to be what does the timeline require? And the timeline requires that it's all finished on the 31st of March, which means that I would say that in February you need to have a decision. So that we can... That's the term. So the latest the tab can make this decision is the next tab meeting. Yes. That's so, so can I make sure. a suggestion? I mean, what if um, you know we gave kind of what our um, quests were basically a week before the next tag, make the final decision in the next tag. Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision at February tag. And if we want to talk about this. In you know, the meeting on the 18th, we're open to yeah. that. I mean, I, I think at this point, the city and staff are comfortable with our projects, or we're just waiting for the Okay. Um, Would that be helpful to you to talk yes. about on the 18th? Yes. The yes. sooner the better. Okay. Be so we'll we'll have the 18th meeting be just general related we'll obviously talk about the technical guidance and we'll talk about projects more specifically um, we'll be sponsoring kind of some more information by that time frame uh, to help make the decision a little more clear and we will need to know from these studies by the end of before the next tech what are viable projects that are available in the studies to use in this round mm -hmm. so we will need to does all of those studies have a meeting in the next month? Yeah, so Rucho is going to be this week, and then they're trying to get the three one scheduled this month. Uh, so all those will be before the February 15th. Okay. I mean, if we at least have a meeting, we can go on to <laughs> the consultant. Hey, mm -hmm. How far are you with each of these, and which are available? And then hopefully we can see whether it's something viable that comes out of you know, part of them. And, yeah, so Barry, I mean, kept some notes. Can you just recap where we are on the potential project list tonight? Sure. Um, so we have one through six. We could possibly combine one and four. We got to kind of discuss that among themselves, but it might push it over the edge as far as being something. So they're going to talk about that. Um, there's some question about number five because it's not supported by a study, but for now it's in the portal. Fine. Um, Number six, we're just going to go with you no know, quadrant from today because that's going to significantly up the amount of the environmental space. Um, number 
seven is in. We're going to put that in the portal. And then we have five. And I'll eight. discuss writing this with you. Yes. Okay. yes you're for nine in the portal, we're going to put that in the portal. And we have two more to consider. We're going to decide on those at the 18th. And if V dot combines those other two, then you have an extra slot for you. Yes, and just note the recommendation from VDOT regarding the south side uh, or south part of. Yeah, you may want to consider breaking north and south. Yeah, I, I know that's okay. Yes, probably for Spotsy, yeah. but yes, that's if they're if we're saying that it, you know, the group. Yes, the, some yeah. To that. Yeah, just wanted that as a note. Big problem that we have this round, and we all have it. VDOT has it. We have it. Everybody has it, and that is. They've so, so radically transformed categories that we don't actually really know what's going to score well. We're, we're guessing, we're estimating, we're trying to understand these new metrics. We have a real big problem, and that is we don't know whether it's go big or go home or go moderately big, or we don't actually know in terms of they're telling us don't put in small projects, but have they made sure that all the scoring criteria are going to make that a reality? Because we could we could be slightly mis. Yes, like, um, so I know for why things and everything that are for added capacity, which is that's really what they're focusing on for our like added capacity and central farms in the road and the general purpose through lane. They did take out the through lane um the learning for it, but that's what they're going to remain focused on. Um, so for that kind of stuff, like they're looking at, you know, it needs to be between two major intersections. Like that's the kind of stuff they want to see. So they're they're doing their best to make sure that the smaller projects are not going to get the funding. That's that's the whole point of the ACP is they're doing all these changes. They're really really trying to make sure that these larger projects actually start getting funded. It's worried that Hampton Roads is going to get one big project funded and the rest of us not get any of that. Right. We don't have enough funding. Yeah. And it's why internally a lot of us were not thrilled by the amount that it's like to. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think in the beginning everyone kind of understood how big of an uh, important factor having that step in there was. Um, and it fell under. Because the whole point of the agency is, you know, these are supposed to be regionally impactful projects. So I understand the reason for doing it, and it is what it is. All right. All right. Does anyone else have anything further on smart scale? I think we have our next steps. We'll discuss at a um, future TAC meeting later this month, um, and then we'll have to make decisions at the February TAC meeting uh, on the website. These pre applications will be. If anyone has any concerns, comments, or changes to projects, please email Carrie, Ian, Thampo staff as soon as possible so we can keep this process running smoothly and we don't get to a next TAC meeting without the information that we need. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll move on to item 8B and understanding it is already past 11. Um, if we could make this item uh, as quick as possible. Thank you. Sure, there surely you will. Um, <laughs> these are the projects uh, for all the five jurisdictions that um, you all helped select. And VHB is uh, working on cost estimates for each of them, along with crash reduction factors. Uh, on your February uh, TAC meeting, you'll have uh, the um, resolution to open public comment period for the safety action plan. We hope that adoption would be in March. Uh, we will be asking localities to provide resolutions of support uh, for their uh, for their uh, elements of the safety action plan, uh, including the safety targets, uh, matching funds. Uh, uh, most importantly, attendance at ongoing meetings for monitoring. Uh, but this is just a nice summary of the projects that are um, being uh, investigated underway. That concludes my presentation. <laughs> All right. So I just have one quick question, just with regards to the uh, the next application. Um, 
process for that? Like, uh, do we know like when the call for projects will be and will the study that's ongoing be completed in time for that? Yes, Paul, we have indications that the um, fiscal year 25 um, uh, NOFO uh, is going to be issued uh, pretty soon. The implementation grants for the last round were um, uh, awarded. Uh, these projects are right in line with that. Um, VHB anticipates the implementation deadline maybe uh, a month or so shorter than uh, or sooner than last time. With each NOFO, the application deadline was was earlier by a month or so. So um, yes, we still anticipate at the worst case, June would be the implementation um, uh, uh, NOFO uh, or application um, submission uh, deadline. So uh, how, how much time like would applicants actually have to do the to do the application? Well, when you get this draft report uh, in February, your costs for each one of these countermeasures on each one of these quarters will have been finished by VHB. They're going to be very detailed, not just a per mile or, you know, they're going to be really solid cost estimates uh, that you can then start working with your, uh, juris your localities while it's under review. Uh, to determine the projects that you all feel are um, um, uh, doable. Uh, you, you may say, hey, you're, uh, you're one, two, three, you may phase them in. You may say, okay, let's do this one and not that one. Uh, but you'll have solid numbers in February uh, or when we issue this uh, draft report uh, the Wednesday before the TAC meeting. And then you can start working on your end, which projects um, uh, or each locality is willing to uh, come up with the 20% match. Um, and we can, um, you know, um, that's, it, you're, you'll really have the information you need in February. Is uh, the expectation that kind of GWC or FAMPO are submitting applications or just that it's all up to localities to submit applications? Oh, that's a very important question. And the, all of the options are available theoretically. So an individual locality can apply, two, two localities together can apply, FAMPO can apply, GWRC can apply. However, if it goes to GWRC or FAMPO, there's a certain amount of risk attached because FAMPO and GWRC have to ensure that they have the match. And if you do a package deal for five localities, one, one locality creates a problem with not meeting the expectations of the match that they have to produce, then FAMPO or GWRC as the applicant Bunch of them to that's what they would prefer. They want bigger groups of things so they can just approve, say, 20 projects for one week in one application. They best like the small applications. However, it does expose GWRC or FAMPA to some risk if one county says, I know we changed our mind, we're not going to. We're not going to fund Project X, but it's now one of those. There is some risk involved in that. You could screw it up for everybody if one locality then gets in a bad mood and won't. So I guess one thought, um, you know, I guess just a little bit, but um, potentially using some STBG money that is fund balance to potentially have FAMPO pay for a consultant to help write the applications. Uh, if there's funding available, that is FAMPO. So I'm not sure what um is required in terms of writing the applications Becky, do you have any i insider? would think yes yeah, uh, i would uh we we applied ourselves for the safety action plan uh, grant and uh in looking at the implementation grant um uh nofo and application process it's the 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 most important thing of an implementation grant is that you self-certify that your safety action plan meets all these requirements. So um, I don't believe a consultant, I, I think the detailed work that VHB is doing with good backup documentation on how they arrived at these cost estimates and the fact that all the countermeasures you all have 
re uh, recommended can be implemented within the existing right of way. We've already met with, with VDOT, who will be partners uh, when we uh, get this money uh, on the VDOT roads, for example, installation of, of, of signage and um, raised pavement markers and so forth. We would use the model that Stat Spotsylvania County has already done with VDOT to um, do the take their bond money and put the paved shoulder on a uh, Tidewater Trail. So I don't believe, uh, Matthew, that the level of uh, uh, work for the implementation application uh, will demand a consultant as would a, a widening project that requires right-of-way acquisition and utility relocation. These are all uh, pretty uh, straightforward projects uh, to be done within the existing roadway prism and within the existing right-of-way. So are we saying if there was a regional application of a bunch of projects from the state tax fund, that's something that FANFO staff could do. So FANFO policy committee or the GWRC board would first have to approve of course. if they're prepared to do this grouping yeah. because there is a certain amount of risk. But, you know, what is enough guarantee that, say, King George County is going to pay their portion of the match? You need a resolution. If their, project, if their project is in the pack, um, you know, what happens if they change their mind and decide, no, they don't want that project now, six months later, and it's the application's already in with Federal Highway. If they can effectively screw up everybody else's application, that's what we're worried about. That there's a the possibility that people will change their minds, and then we, we're a little stuck. Do we know how many applications Panto and GWC get in terms of locality There is. I don't believe there's a limit to the applications. Well, what was your question, Paul? How many applications do FAMPO and GWC get for this program relative to localities? Well, there's there's no you you all have been uh, talking so long about the the fixed number of slots. <laughs> it was smart scale. Um, there is no there is no limit. The limit would be uh, those projects for which the locality is willing to come up with the twenty percent match. And that are in the action plan. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, in the action plan. And they have to have the commitment from the locality to pay the local match. Those are the those are the requirements. It's not like you can only have three slots or ten slots. It doesn't matter. And I think we would require a resolution support showing the local match as from each locality as well. Uh, I'm even concerned that a resolution of support might not actually, at the end of the day, produce the cash. That's if it. If, you know, if somebody says, hey, we actually got the cash here, it is, that's one thing. But if it's like, hey, we'll give you a letter, and then they change their mind about projects, we have had significant new election <coughs> officials get elected recently. And if they change their mind on things repeatedly, there is a certain amount of risk because it, it can... It can stop a whole project if one of the participating localities doesn't produce the match. We don't know then what happens. Will federal highways block the whole project? Do you have a, or will they carry on paying out to the other localities? It's it's a. However, they say they want bigger groupings. They don't like to approve one stop sign. Group bigger amounts because they. So moving forward, I guess two points. Um, I believe I saw on the Safety Control website that the NOFO might be released in February. Um, so that's something that we'll probably want to look into just to cover, confirm the time frame. So then at the February uh, 5th TAC meeting, um, we'll talk about this further. And at that time frame, I'd like to kind of decide on next steps and how we want to proceed as a region or at locality by locality. And we can go from there. All right, uh, moving on uh, to item D. DCR trail crossing study closeout funds. All right, this is a request for your endorsement to transfer some leftover funding from UPC 121799, the freight summit, to UPC 111682, the VCR crossing, sorry, VCR trail crossing study, um, in order to close both of them out. Uh, we didn't need as much as we thought we would on the freight summit, so there was about 12,547 left over for the BCR trail crossing study. So between um, increasing smart scale readiness standards and a request for the large alternative from the policy committee, the um, 
consultant Baker considered ended up doing a considerable amount of extra work past the task order of course. And this amount would cover about 30% of that extra work and the um, consultant offered to absorb the rest of that amount. So today I need your endorsement on this so that I can take it to the policy committee for resolution. So uh, how much money are we talking about with this? Yeah. Um, $12,547. And it's STBG HIP. Um, it's primarily PL and then PL. PL. Okay. How much, what is the difference between the two? The 12,000 was the breakdown. Um, I do not know the breakdown. It appears they've done about $30,000 of extra work for that study. And so we said to them, we don't have budget of funds for that. And because they should have alerted us earlier, they're prepared to absorb a big chunk of that. And we're not prepared to recommend funding from elsewhere. So we said there is this smaller amount of leftover funds we would ask the time. So, so they did extra work without a contract to do that extra work? Well, the policy committee requested some extra work. Right. And what they should have done is said, well, at that point, they are going to have to charge extra for that. And so they're prepared to absorb more than half the cost. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, we have got really good deals from our consultants so far. We've got lots of work for reasonable amounts of funding. So we don't feel like our consultants have um, overcharged us in the last two years. We've actually got really good deals. So this was under the direction of the policy committee to do extra work, correct? They did ask for a whole other alternative. So All right. Can... Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Does TAC, I guess one question, does TAC need to be motioning to approve or can this just go straight to the policy committee? That's, That's a good point. point. That's a good point. Sorry, what was that? Does TAC need to make a motion and actually approve this or can this just go straight to the policy committee? What the policy committee needs is your endorsement. I need to tell, let them know that the TAC endorsed. Well, I, I guess his question is, since they are the ones who made the amendment, it's not TAC. Amendment. It's not TAC that they need approval from because they're the ones who made the the suggestion to give additional work for the contract. The TAC, the TAC never makes an approval. The TAC just recommends yes on it. And then the policy committee has to no, decide. No, I get it. He's just saying, should it be bypassed if the TAC provided recommendations since the TAC was not consulted on doing the additional work? Then, if that is true, I would withdraw my motion. If well, that's true. No, the TAC, the TAC was also consulted on the, the extra scenarios, right? Yeah. But I think uh, that the consultant, we feel that the consultant yeah. should have been more firm on telling us. That was going to require extra cost. Yeah. No, I agree. I don't disagree with that. So yeah. they're going to absorb most of it. This is just a small amount which we have because a particular other study cost us less. So are we motioning to recommend the move of the, move of the funds yeah. without yeah. the knowledge of what the actual fund amounts are? We know it's $12,000, but I don't know the breakdown of PL versus STPG funds. Well, can I ask why that matters? It's just semantics. Okay, just curious. It's not a, if I'm missing something, I want to know before I. Back. I just they did extra work without a contract. I'm not sure they should be expecting additional funds, so even I'm, though they were asked by the policy committee, which is just the. Yeah, and I figured you would know the breakdown. I just looked on the six-year plan, and it was primarily. For I think I think the thirty thousand was from. Oh, I'm talking about the break. Yeah. Got the breaks up. It was thirty thousand from here, and then the balance was uh, rural. So I think most of it was, uh, in fact, all of it was uh, money that came out of our CMAC SDG funding allocation for that year, was thirty thousand, and then there was like thousand dollars from rural or something. Yeah, I I just which uh, we never spent. So we are only talking about one funding. Batch. Yeah, there's no break. It's split over. So it's just SDBG. It's only SDBG. Okay. 
Mr. Chair, I would just say that, you know, normally I agree if you do the work, it's on you. But mm -hmm. since we have funding available um, that can be used for this purpose, I, I would not want to set the precedent of always doing that because there may not be funding available. However, uh, we also have to note that the policy committee did ask for the work to be done. And ultimately, um, they may not do some additional work for us in the future or even bid on our requests. And if you've noticed with FAMFO projects, we have not gotten a lot of bidders on their studies. So that's just my only comment. But we can, the group can vote it down if y'all don't want to give them the money. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Do we, do we know how much it would have cost? They said 35. 35 total. Yeah, they, they, well, no, they did, they did about 35 extra. They did about thirty-five thousand extra, and they are prepared to just absorb the rest and help with the study. So, um, we have a long-standing relationship with Baker, and they do a lot of work for us. If there's been a conversation that we're going to do this this time, but our yes, in the future, yes, that they're going to. Yeah, we've had the conversation, and actually, we've changed our entire way of of reviewing tasks because of this. So you're making sure. How was the about that? That's we've had an entire conversation with you about this and reviewing task orders and the whole process. Like no, I mean, um, just, there was a lot. I, I don't know all about the, the policy committee, what they asked for, and everything that, but I know we're we went back and forth with them a lot for cost estimate and everything. Um, I, I feel like I like precedence of what they need to look like, so I'm hoping for the future that there's not as many questions that are when it comes down to it. I mean, we just dealt with it for the consultant for the reviewability type one study. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, as we progress with this, that it becomes a lot easier to do the cost estimates and the consultants kind of start understanding what, what they produce. All right, um, I had a first and a second. Um, is there any further discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. With, with that, uh, we'll move on to correspondence. Do we need to go through these since they were in our packet? Mm -hmm. okay. If nobody has any questions and FAMPO staff does not want to make any further comments, we can skip ahead to Wait, staff uh, reports. Here, the OAP email. Oh, um, oh, no. in correspondence, we have a just a correspondence we wanted to know if anybody had received this letter besides Matthew. Matthew received a letter from OAP, and I'm going to ask Mike Craig if anybody or Jamie from Fredericksburg received a letter from OAP talking about your priorities and your UDAs. Did you guys receive that letter? And VTrans needs, NB they're requesting that we provide feedback for our UDA VTrans needs by the end of the week and said that these will affect your smart scale VTrans needs. Mm -hmm. so, so the entire city is a UDA, so I would yeah. think that you guys should have been notified about this. Fox Mini doesn't have any UDAs, so, so we didn't get the email. No, I don't, did not get this. It might have gone to Eric Nelson. I think it came to us. You got to check him out. All right. We're just trying to see if anybody else received it. I mean, we looked through the list and they did not have like that list that just leaders and I don't have everyone on there. The list that they sent out, um, because we were, I guess, uh, Stephen was CC'd on it. Um, it did not, we were checking through it and we noticed that there were some like counties and localities kind of missing from that list. I don't know if that was on purpose because um, we weren't notified beforehand that they were sending specific emails. Okay. Do, do you have any thoughts on the email? No. I mean, honestly, if it's with the B-trans and everything, they don't really, they don't really keep the district in the loop about why they're asking for this stuff. There is one concern, yeah. And the concern is that suddenly a county must very quickly in one week come up with a list of priorities. Like my you just take a crown and make them up. That's that's <laughs> what the email reads. I haven't been able to like the you know what I'm saying? It like that's the way. really irregular to do that. It's just within a week. If it said, you know, the email does in December, it's said by mid January, you can let us know, okay, you know, it's a month's time frame. To work on it, discuss it, whatever. And that his projects are going to be stored by the needs that he comes up with, like 
That seems very strange. That, that, and also it implies that there's only enough time for staff to respond to this. And just can't, I mean, I'm not, you know, no, you're but I mean, staff don't make decisions on important things like this on their own opinion. There's a process. You have to go to a committee or a, but the board, actually, is very odd. It will likely be used to screen needs. What does that mean? Like, it might or might not, you know? <laughs> I, if I received an email like this, I would lie back and say, you have to be kidding. I, I will be writing a, a, a better word of email. <laughs> Tell me very worried to us, so we just thought we'd share it with you. Well, Matthew, you know, graciously shared it with me after I said, you know, this is weird, you should share it. Yeah, it says, um, do not share this email. Or the links in this email, so I removed the links. Sure. So. Anyway, there you go for your consideration. The latest hijinks from Wiki. Next. Staff reports. Um, okay. Okay. um thanks to y'all who have responded to any of our consultants' um, requests for information. They are in the middle of both data collection and visual analysis. And they're looking to get some initial information to you by the January 17th um, stakeholder meeting. So they'll have the, I guess, their first brush strokes um, of either identified needs or um, kind of initial findings. Uh, actually, we're going to quite be there. It would be more of data validation. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of where it is. So you can down the middle of data crunch that we have dumped a lot of information on. So we'll have that kind of for y'all to have that first look into what's been going on um, next week. Have they received traffic counts? Yes. Yes. I'll and email and there are a lot of good new traffic counts. I haven't seen the results, but they've completed that. They've put counters, physical counters out there and done physical counting, which will benefit all of us, right? VDOT can use those counts. Jurisdictions can use those counts. They can go towards the new Ampere Travel Command model, which is um, currently under construction. So having all of the data that they're bringing in is going to be useful for the region anyway. Well, thank you for that, John and Ian. Uh, looking forward to meeting next Wednesday, I believe, in this room. Uh, with that, we'll move. Oh, anything else on Route 3? I know we touched on that a little bit briefly. Um, we just wanted to update you that we have added to the memo um, since you last saw it. Um, and the policy committee have endorsed it, and the updated memo has um, been in your pack since we sent out the pack. Um, and we have now sent it into with the cover letter and the resolution from the policy committee. We've sent it into OIP and to the Secretary for Transportation, and we've sent a copy. Um, while I was away, Becky and and actually Chip from GWRC helped us and sent letters and a copy of this memo to the other jurisdictions. And I believe, Cassie, that some of them have spoken to you. And so you're um, helping them understand what it is. Yeah, I'm meeting with, um, actually on Friday, with the Middle Peninsula CDC and their county administrators um, during their, their monthly meeting that they have um, for the residency engineer and I to go over any questions and concerns that they might have. Um, and I've talked to um central office about some of the questions and everything and got feedback from them for it so i'm hoping that we can kind of just answer their questions i have been told from central office that we do not need all localities support to have this um so if for some reason middlesex and matthews i know gloucester wants it so if, like middlesex and matthews decide that they don't want it for whatever reason um, the PDC won't then do like a support for it, but it could still no matter what go through. Um, it's not going to be like, oh, well, because of these two localities, because they don't support it, um, we won't change it. it. It doesn't matter if the state decides that, yes, they agree that this is something that needs to be done, then they'll do it. Is this in front of the Spotsium City Council and Boards yet, or will it be? Is FAMPA looking for locality resolution support? I mean, it's something R4 does support. So we are just trying to get as many letters into OIP and the Secretary's office as we can just to keep it in front of them, but they don't think it's 
phone me, fan phone is interested in this. Okay. So if you can send in a letter, we would appreciate it. Okay. Oh. it adds to the support that this is an important corridor. Yeah, I did reach out to uh, the Culpeper District people as well to read out um, to let them know that it, obviously we didn't know about this letter until after it was sent out. So uh, at least like that, you were sending it out to the locality. So we reached out to them just to let them know that. Thank you. Um, it had been sent out to just get on their radar and everything they wanted to talk to their county administrators about it because the residents, the engineers are the ones who talk to the county administrators. Um, usually planning, um, we don't talk to them as much. Um, so really our, our residents, the engineers are the ones to make sure that they're aware of this going on. I mean, the key thing while we're doing this, well, first of all, um, when the state acknowledges the importance of the corridor, they pay attention to it. And secondly, when we apply for funding in various mechanisms to be able to say that your project, the widen Route 3, is a state corridor statewide significance, it immediately screens in or gets um, you know, better in terms of scoring when we actually apply for funding. So we think that this is also, if we succeed, it would be one of the few that's been added since the original orders of statewide significance were yep. originally promulgated. So it'd be quite a big deal if we succeed. All right, with that, uh, we will move on to member reports. Does any, anybody want to have anything to report? So just a question, just going back to that, like when, when would you want a resolution? As soon as we can, but you know, there's no specific deadline. We've sent the original in. And now we've alerted everybody along the corridor if they'd like to send in a letter of support. So uh, six weeks, maybe. Okay. I have a question though. As you talked about, it would be better if we all sort of combined and combined. Well, no, I mean, I think it's fine sending separate ones in. I think it's just at the time uh, when I sent that first email, um, it was, I had already known that Northern Neck was talking about it and that. Um, you know, it was being brought up by, of course, at the time when I sent the email, I did not realize that the Mill Peninsula PDC all of a sudden was bringing up to talk about it because you guys had sent this email out. Um, and I knew you guys were also talking about it in committee stuff for it. And I was like, oh, well, it'd be great to just kind of get all combined that all three did it like a resolution of support. Now I combined one just that all three PDCs that were covering that all sent in a resolution of support to kind of um, back it. But now that I know where the Mill Peninsula PDC was, was going with that, um, it kind of destroyed my email. Being like, yeah, let's everyone collaborate and not realizing that any locality about Saluda would, for some reason, not help this. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping Friday kind of helps make it and realize it's not a bad thing to do. Um, their whole worry is that, you know, they would just come through and like, instantly widen the road and oh. make access management harder and everything for like new projects and uh, new developments coming through. Um, make it harder to put in traffic signals. And I'm like, well, no matter what, and that's a warrant. So, uh, you know, it's kind of those kind of fears that they were worried about. Uh, increasing the speed limit, stuff like that. And I'm like, no, no, that's not how any of this works. Um, okay. Nothing changes unless somebody applies. Right. Well, and also like you know the the speed limit wouldn't wouldn't change instantly. Um, you know, and that that's kind of why we always for areas that want to reduce speed limits. Um, Bowling Green is a perfect example for Route 301. They were like, why can't you just do like a speed study to see if we can get the speed limit reduced? And we're like, because it might actually increase the speed limit. You probably don't want to do a speed study there. So it's stuff like that. Um, you know, it's not an instant. Yes, we're going to go widen and, and uh, make the roads faster through your areas. So hopefully, hopefully Friday we get some good out of it. Thank you for all your help. I was also here and that is uh member reports. Anybody have anything they would like to report? You have an update on the question of about twenty-seven thousand dollars. 
So that was, there were no additional expenditures or anything else. And from the closeout process, they found that there were unobligated federal funds and they could obligate sort of just the map. Maximize that. Okay. So they had closed out federal funds. Not an expenditure or anything. Okay. associated with this, and they were just trying to maximize the map. Okay. Sure. Right. So it was not associated with the project or what? Why? But right. there were no additional expenditures. It was just, you know, making sure that all of the federal funds that were there were obligated so that they could close it out. And, and yes, so they close it out and then okay. our whole process is of making sure we maximize the use of federal funds. Okay. Very good. So we can go ahead and get this one. That it should not be a, a whole out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the yeah. Uh, Anything further? Right. I'll just mention um, due to Rec Connect, we had the junior seat board of the Hoover strategic plan in November. So we've been working with the consultants updating the map that needed to be corrected. Um, but we're hoping to post that, you know, for availability soon. But we did get through that process. So thank you all for participating in that and helping uh, provide your feedback. We're really happy to about it. Um, real quick, if any entity, jurisdiction or otherwise, wants an update on System Plan 2050, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, just send me an email. Happy to do that. Um, we're not going to do like a formal round like we did in Phase One or Phase Two, but we're just going to be more targeted. Just, you know, hey, here's what we're talking about. If we need to link up, you know, trans future transportation plans or future comprehensive plans, plumbing, what have you, um, and then I'll plan to present a few slides at the March tech. Yeah, we, I guess, are interested in your future scheduled plans, changes from what was originally proposed to what's going to be proposed now. Mm -hmm. Because remember, some of our politicians sit on your board. Mm -hmm. We at the staff level don't sit on your boards. We don't get whatever it is you show them. Yeah, and just, just for full disclosure, what we're going to have in the plan of the 2050 vision is not going to be down to the timetable level. You're not going to be able to say that this train leaves at this time, but it's a concept of operation. So it's like span, headways, stopping patterns, basically. Um, so what about, infrastructure. what about between now and, say, 2030, 2031? Do you have more detail about that? Yeah, so that's going to be part of the implementation report that it's like a sub-technical report. Um, I will say that most of the implementation ramping up to the 2030 level that I've already presented to this body um, is going to be having to be co closely coordinated with the transforming rail in Virginia with VPRA. So it's, it's almost like it's, it's VPRA's, you know, show. Um, after 2030, you know, we're going to propose an implementation strategy that's reasonable, that's logical based on expected fund funding, that kind of thing, demand. Um, but it's going to still be very high level. It's going to be you know, I'm just going to say, like, add 25% of the service, you know, every five years between now and 2050, that kind of thing. So if if you feel like there's more specificity and you want to meet one-on-one and include something like that because it jived with a regional, you know, or a, or a locality project that's planned for that 2030, 2040 time horizon, then we're happy to do that. I think we're interested in things like the reverse commuting trains, the weekend mm -hmm. trains, that kind of thing, which we don't know. About yeah, you know, it's been discussed and in process, but we don't know what the final result is. Yeah, and uh, that'll likely come out of further discussions with the board leading up to the beginning of this next fiscal year here in July, okay. um, which is the first month that we could start running weekend service uh, for the new budget. But again, it, it all has to be worked out from a railroad perspective. It's now no longer a funding issue; it's a operations issue. So. It's okay. We're still blaming you. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> Planner, the planner gets all the arrows. Still blaming him. The planner gets all the arrows. All right, awesome. Any okay. other member reports? Yeah. Um, so Stafford County, for the past few years, has been working with Stafford County Public Schools with internships, and we've been pretty successful. If anybody is interested in uh, internships, there's an internship expo at Fredericksburg Expo Center. A couple weeks, right? A couple, uh, next month, month yeah. Next month. Y'all have a table? So we do have a table. Okay. Um, uh, there's only two representatives at each table, but uh, if you're interested in any of the information, I can forward you. Okay. Okay. Fun fact: the expo is funded by a grant to Virginia, which you've seen. So. Okay. <laughs> We're glad they're here. You yeah. They had a, a big utilities truck there last year. Cool to see a bus there. <laughs> 
when is it? When is it? February sixth is the uh ex the yeah uh, and it's nine to two. You're only allowed two representatives, generally. Okay. Until you sneak in with the <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So I did get an email back from Wendy about the tunnel. Um, so they did say as long as the major widening feature, as long as it's uh, lanes in both directions, that the pedestrian tunnel would be eligible under that application. Thank you. Yeah, 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 but that's a question on how much we think we can get, we can get funded. Because theoretically, okay, then we have to, you know, how much do we want to risk putting in versus? Yes. That precludes the idea of breaking like the southbound car. Right. And it, so, it just increases the cost. Yeah, so I think the next month is the time to have that discussion because we'll then have to park it for several years before we start that again. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Well, thank you. Well, uh, looking forward to seeing everyone at the next TAC meeting in next Thursday. <laughs>